we can work on a drawing or a painting for an hour, but it took you 40 years to leave it alone. I do think that's true with the, an artist too. I mean, somebody can, can come back to it later in life or at a, at a point when they need to, and, and it was like they never stopped, you know. The, the, like I said before, I think in our previous podcast, the older I get at this, teaching and making art, the less I feel I know. And the last recording was a couple years ago, so I know even less than I did then. It's a podcast number two. <laughs> it We've is. We've done one before with Jim Woodside. Jim's in town. And uh, we thought, you know, we should have an artist on that's here right in the midst of coronavirus. Get a little sense of what life is. He brought in this wonderful uh, portrait for those people watching on YouTube can see it's himself. And read what it says, Jim. Uh, uh, the title, um, it, it's a little bit long. Some of it's written on the piece, but I'll read it from the back. It says, self-quarantined, apparently, in the Arizona desert in a green shirt. <laughs> um, so, How many bottles of wine had you opened at that point? Uh, well, it wasn't that much. I might have had, I might have had a glass or two, but... Um, um, it's a strange time, and uh, you know, I threw the. I, without thinking too much about it, I guess the title certainly reflects that, um, definitely. But we try to keep a little bit of a humor about it too, so the hence the green shirt. Yeah, know? there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of got stuck out here in a, in a way, didn't you? I mean, you weren't. You've been out. So you live in Boston, I, I, outside yeah. of Boston. Yeah. You teach yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, all these are things available on his first podcast for those who want to hear it who haven't. Yeah. Um, but you s had planned this in advance and you came out. When did you get out here? Um, I got out here two weeks ago uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, this is, you know, I, I, I treasure these trips. This is like my uh, fourth or fifth painting trip out here. Um, and they're super productive for me. Um, and I, you know, I kind of just, bad choice of words, but quarantine myself in the desert. I wasn't thinking about any of that and, and paint and paint and paint. And, um, um, and so that's, that was what I was going to do again this trip. That's what I have been doing, but, um, I did not anticipate this kind of, uh, ominous cloud over everything. Here. Yeah. I mean, when you left, it wasn't like this at all. We, no, no. We hadn't shut down Europe. We hadn't done any of that kind of stuff. Uh, no, there was concern. I'm um, certainly at the school where I teach. Um, uh, we have a lot of international students, and uh, it messed up their travel plans, especially the kids going back to Asia. And, you know, they're starting to get concerned. But everything has happened so quickly and uh, day by day um, that I, I, none of us could have ever anticipated uh, this, this kind of... Uh, trajectory i suppose but yeah. yeah and so those kids are they going to be stuck here or did they get out or what happened? um they uh um, a lot of them were stuck on campus um but now they have gone back to china um and i don't know when they'll come back yeah. um um it's you know everything is changing day by day but uh, uh and our school is actually going to an online format um when we start up again uh in a, in a few weeks yeah and how do you have you you never have you ever done that before oh, god no yeah no, no so this is all new yeah uh, <laughs> uh, uh teach and we've we've had some meetings online about it and already and um uh, so it, it, it will be interesting for sure, but uh, you know how you teach art online, and it's, we'll, we'll artists are, are nothing if not adaptable, and um, we'll come up with something. It won't be the same as being in a studio, but yeah. yeah. Sure. And what are you teaching right now? That's cool. Uh, uh, most primarily drawing, but also I work with the seniors doing independent work, um, and uh, uh, so you know, there's there's you know. Well, uh, and we'll adapt to to what we can do online with that. Right. Yeah. 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 And I'm sure, yeah, it's got to be a stressful time, especially for a senior, because they're probably at this point have already gotten accepted to schools, I would assume. Yeah. Much, so, oh, right? yeah. They, they've got their plans in place. But this, the end of the year, is a real celebratory time. You know, they have an individual exhibit and... Um, and we have some big shows at the end of the uh, at the end of the year. So those aren't out of the question yet. But uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely a time none of us will at the school forget. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. And uh, it's though it is nice, I would say, as for yourself, as you actually have a job that pays. 
Uh, a lot of artists, that's not a... Yeah, that's true. Uh, knock on wood. We hope that uh, we yeah. can keep things going there. But yeah. um, I'm sure you can. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so you've been out, you got out here two weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, right now where you are, it's kind of a developed more into a hot spot a little bit, hasn't it? Isn't the Boston area a little bit? Um, I think over the last couple of weeks in Massachusetts, it has, um, yeah, there has been a good bit, especially actually in the county that we live in. Um, I don't know exactly if it's, you know, I, I, how much of a hot spot. I don't know. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, for definitely more than, and from what I, from what I hear, uh, from talking to um, people back at home, my wife, it's, it's much more of a ghost town um, than I have seen right around Tucson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're taking it very seriously, um, in Tucson as everyone should. I mean, yeah. even in the gallery we have, you know, you're not allowed to get closer than three feet. You know, it's yeah. really, yeah. you got to do the distancing and, yeah. uh, even with the clients, if they sure. want to come see, they got to play by the rules and, and, and that's a very interesting thing to do. It's very, it, it is. And I, you know, I'm your, you're the physician, so you will know this better than I, but it's, it's, um, uh, it, 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 it's so different in terms of how we interact with the, with, right. one, with one another. And, but, but I, I guess the idea is that if we all uh, adhere to these, um, these procedures that it'll sort of Tamp, tamp it. Tamp, That's right. And it know, will. Tamp, That's the, right. uh, tamp it down. Yeah. yeah no. And yeah. you just have to be incredibly judicious in what you do. I mean, yeah. you know, just on this podcast table, before you come, we clean it off. <laughs> After you come, we clean it off, yeah. clean all the doors, you know, half a dozen times a day or more. You know, you just follow all those things and you, 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 uh, you know, even showing jewelry, we use, you know, rubber gloves. Oh, really? So, yeah. 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 It's so it's, it might be overkill, but I'm cool with overkill. I, I, I don't know if it's overkill. I mean, yeah. but I think it's a good thing to do. The, the irony, of course, you know, as we're talking about this is that, you know, me getting away to paint in the desert again was, it's, it's probably the safest place I can possibly be. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you're down yeah. by Benson, right? Uh, yeah, just um, just outside of Benson, Mescal Benson area. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, and how did you find that place? Um, uh, just this was a couple of years ago, uh, searching around for some out of the way places that I could paint that would welcome someone, and you have a feel for what you see in Airbnb and so forth, and. Um, and so the uh, the woman who uh, owns this um, this ranch has you know we become good friends and mm. uh, and so I've been back a number of times to paint and um, and shown her my work as well and uh, she's got a good eye and so it's it's an interesting interesting yeah thing, she yeah. enjoys it yeah and how do you like painting that I mean because it's a different desert it's not really as much saguaro ish over right. there right rolling hills and things. Um, yeah, and and I do miss the saguaros, you know, like on a first, my first couple of years out here painting, I did a number of those, which is, that's, I mean, it's the it's the present thing. You got to do those. It's right. like, it, you know, the, the, it, it's a rite of passage, you know, and I'm not done with it either, but um, but I, I find the desert down there really, really beautiful in a different way. Um, I don't know the exact, uh, I don't have the exact language for the geography of it, yeah. but... Um, but it High has, desert. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Probably so. But it has a kind of, of uh, wonderful, dusty appeal that I, uh, that I, really, that I really like. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, I mean, because you've painted in these kind of, I mean, you painted Antarctica, for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so uh, um, I, I find that any area I'm painting has a kind of, of, of power to it, has a kind of voice to it. And... Uh, if I'm attracted enough to that, um, then it, it, it will emerge in the work more and more. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, uh, that's, that's part of it for me. Yeah. yeah, and I've seen a real change, I think. It's, it's hard to describe. I mean, your, your paintings have the same voice. And they will always have the same voice, mm -hmm. which is what I love about it. But I have seen a change, you know, getting into the environment, into the desert, and how you look at things a little differently yeah. and your palette's a little differently. Yeah. I think yeah. the blues are a little bluer and, you know, I don't know if that's true, but that's how I see it. Oh, that's true. And, uh, um, I, I, I definitely feel more, uh, um, comfortable is the word, but I, I, I know exactly what I'm, you know, how to approach this as I sit out there. When I first started doing this, this was kind of this overwhelming beauty. Um, and you know, you have to be careful to kind of not be, 
eclipsed by that, mm. you know. And so, so in some ways, uh, I found myself this, you know, choosing views and things to work from that were maybe not as spectacular, or or uh, because I, I then could make them, you know, I could do do my own thing with them. Um, now I feel much more uh, uh, immediately at home when I sit down and I start to work for, in this environment. Um, and and there is a kind of, and, and the way that I paint always mm -hmm. this kind of urgent, angular kind of mark making. Um, it, it does, in my mind, it lends itself to this geography. It, it's why I felt so natural mm. coming to do it. Um, and I, I do think that that a lot of artists, you know, you, you paint here long enough and you you end up in geometry class. I mean, it's just, gonna, uh -huh. you know. Well, and, it's everywhere, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it's the, the rocks, the cactus, the spines, even yeah. the animals. I mean, the scales of those snakes and the... Uh, absolutely. And, and um, I... I and the last number of paintings I've done, you know, I um, uh, from this this current trip, um, there one of the things that's been in my mind quite a bit has been um, some of the um, Native American blankets mm. that um, actually that I've seen at your uh, at your shop and and the books that mm -hmm. um, that Kathleen gave me um, one of my last trips. So just this beautiful reduced simplicity and i thought i i've i thought this last summer too i want to i would love to be able to do paintings that that are as unambiguous as a navajo blanket mm. as an indian blanket that that that, that clarity mm. is is amazing to me um and those are the kind of things i think about i mean i'm not i i'm not so much interested in picture making as i am in in experience making experience sharing yeah um the emotion of what you see and feel yeah while you're there yeah, so when i look at a painting like we have two on the walls here for people who are watching youtube that when you look at those as a viewer like i do you know i feel on the one on the right next to me uh from your shot actually is i feel the heat uh the uh the intensity the humidity um, the moment for sure. Yeah, and that's that's really. That's, I'm glad that you would say that because that's what I'm. I'm trying. That's what I want them to be about. I mean, it's not like I'm painting, thinking I've got to get this emotion, you know. Right. But you can't do it that but way. Right? No, just the opposite, it, it's I would just think. kind of the way I work, and I want the experience to reflect that time and that place and that day and that whatever the nervousness I might have had about the storm coming or snakes mm -hmm. or anything else, right. you know? And, um, and the more I do this, I, I think I even said in a, in a, in an email exchange or text exchange with you the other day, showing you a new painting. Um, sometimes I'll, I'll sit in the presence of what I'm looking at and I do this a lot and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of look at it and I'll, and I'll, I'll do a little bit of drawing, but almost none. I start right in. It's almost like I'm. I, I try by being in the presence of to kind of recreate the environment or the experience with one little bit of DNA. Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm extrapolating from there. So uh, that's how I think about it, and that's how I do it. Um, yeah. And you're painting these on the spot. Yeah. Uh, oh, definitely on the spot. Yeah, and plain air. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'll go back in the studio and I will work on it a bit more and touch it up. Yeah. Um, because, um, but even that is immediate, like, mm -hmm. you know, close to the environment. This, this, it, it, so I, I will, um, I'll touch them up inside some, but it's, um, yeah, it's definitely. And the big ones, like you did this big, you have 3040 that you showed me. Uh huh. And so, same thing done outside and yeah. then taken in and worked on. Yeah, yeah, taken in and worked on a, a little bit. Um, and, you know, painting outside, you know, you, you, you learn to come up with all these ridiculous solutions. Right now, I, um, I have a, a ladder, an old wooden ladder, and a piece of lattice nailed to it, and nails coming of that, out of that. And that, I lean that up against something to hang the canvas on. And mm -hmm. that's 
uh, functions as an easel. Well, and I think that's what artists have to do, right? They have to uh, be uh, creative in the ways that they come up with how they're going to paint for sometimes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You, 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 you figure out a way to do it, you know, and I tell kids this. I mean, there's always... There's always a reason not to work. There's always a reason, you know, there's always <laughs> yeah, a reason not to. There, the, yeah. I don't have the right paint. I don't have the right, the weather's not quite right, my <laughs> this or that. And, right. and, and, and you, so I, I think you just have to figure out how to do it. And, and you, you give up the idea of making it um, uh, not only perfect, but totally contained and complete and controlled i i just i just do it with, with what i have yeah i'm not sure if i'm being clear but no it's true i mean i think a lot of artists have a very hard time knowing when they're done yeah. clearly you do not um no that's gotten easier over the years yeah. actually um i i in fact even that drawing i did the other that we looked at the self-portrait and some other things i i, I could do a painting or a drawing and maybe it only took me a couple of hours but it took me 40 years to leave it alone, you yeah, know? Right. And um, that's really how I think about it sometimes, you know? Yeah, when not to add anymore. When not to add anymore. Um, and uh, there was an artist once that said, uh, I don't remember who, that said, how do you know when it's finished? And he said, well, it doesn't bother me anymore. And some, some famous artist, and um, I, I, I like that. And as I've gotten older, it bothers me less and less, you know? I just... Right. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've heard that before from other artists. Yeah. And I don't even know if they know that saying, but yeah. they've said, I, you know, when I quit seeing the imperfections, I'm kind of there. Yeah. It just, and also painting quickly and painting a lot helps me with that because the subsequent uh, uh, painting becomes, you know, the, the, the less important. Mm -hmm. You know, you move to the next one, you know, and, um, so that, that's part of the process. Yeah. And when you have one that, isn't as successful. What do you do with that? Do you get rid um, of it or just? Say I'm sorry. Do, do I? You, yeah. Do you scrape it? Uh, yeah. I I don't usually finish a whole painting and then scrape it. I'm I'll scrape. I, I I will scrape off parts of it. Yeah. And then as I proceed, and I I mean I could have I could think that a painting. Oh, there's a nice arrangement of rocks and clouds, and it looks dramatic, and that's what I'm going to paint. And then I start doing it, and there's some interesting little <clears throat> red weeds coming out that I didn't notice before. In a, that, that becomes the subject. They become more interesting. The focal so, point. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I guess that's. Um, um, uh, I will change. I will redirect it. Mm. I don't think any of them are so important that I have to stick to this thing. Right. You know? yeah. And do you look for that focal point in a, when you're picking a subject matter to paint? Yeah, yeah. Or does I mean, it just kind of hit you? Uh, I guess it's kind of both. Yeah. You know, I mean, I I look at forms and subject matter that yes attract me, but also lend themselves to the way that I paint. You know, mm. um, so angularity wise. You yeah, mean? just I uh, just the way that I work. I go, oh, I could I could see myself working on that. You mm. know, and I I I think that there's a there's a kind of symbiotic thing there as an artist gets older um you you figure out what's good for you and what works for you um and it's not just what attracts you it's what you can actually do yeah and control yeah. and 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 redirect and you know maybe that becomes what attracts you to some extent exactly exactly <laughs> i can paint this i don't know if i can paint that uh, yeah and and uh, and I want to, you know, yeah. Have you done the Grand Canyon yet? No, um, no, I've got a lot of places to go. Yeah. Um, I have not. In fact, I've only been there once, and that was, my wife and I drove through there in, I like, 1985, and I think it's still there. And yeah. I'll, you know, I'll, 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 <laughs> a little I'll, bigger. I'll have to go up there. Um, but but I, I also try... Uh, uh, to not, you know, I, I, I try to find forms, whether, like I said before, maybe that aren't always so grand, mm -hmm. whether it's a, a small way, a, arrangement in some, in some little uh, uh, 
valley or something like that or some little mini canyon that I see. And I, I will try to find something that I can impose on that minor situation that will have some grandness to it, will have, extrapolate mm. into something more. So I don't, you know, I, 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 I think it's the same concept of you, you know, you, you can go all around the world and I've known some people that have traveled everywhere and they're still the most provincial people in the world. And then I know other people who have hardly traveled at all and they're really worldly. Um, so it's, it, it's how you perceive and, and what you do with the information that you have. I see. So, you know, it's not a matter of getting a grand image. It's really a matter of finding something that works for how you paint. Uh, it works for how I paint yeah. and... Um, um, the environment where I am and my own uh, 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 my own conditions, how I set up, um, where I'm staying. There, there's a kind of I don't know it's kind of corny, but there's a kind of mystery to it, and there's a kind of um, of uh, uh, of theater to it all. You know, hmm. um, it, it, yeah. Uh, you feel that every time the theater of it. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I mean. You don't want to fake it, and I, I think that it's it becomes more interesting that way and more doable for me, um, much more exciting. You know, I think that there 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 needs to be that kind of drama. You mm. know, maybe it's um, romantic, but I do see it that way. Yeah, well, I can I can see it. I mean, I yeah. need to see settings to be able to to write often yeah i mean I, I need the sense the smells all the senses to be able to really you know put it down in words it makes sense that you need that same kind of thing to be able to capture I, it in I, you know painting I, yeah and i think in any art any art that you're doing you do have to have those kinds of 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 awareness of your conditions around you I and mean, i think it was um, bob dylan said something like y you have to protect what gets in your head and um, or what goes in your head, you know. However, I mean, I um, but yeah. th that's that's true, you know. You you you, it's true. Yeah. So now you've been doing this for two weeks. Yeah. And um, blood pressure is probably down a little bit, right? Relaxing. Yeah. Way. Oh, I feel great out there. I'm I'm a little worried about uh, this whole you know w world event and my family in yeah. particular. Yeah. 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 And they're back in. Uh, they're Boston. all back in Massachusetts. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. So, you know, are you prepared yourself yet to get back into that groove yet, mentally? Um, it's coming, no, not, coming not, tomorrow. No, it's coming tomorrow. Yeah, it's coming tomorrow. Tomorrow night I've got a, a red-eye flight. I, I will be. You know, I've got a, a, a painting I'm finishing down there um, in Benson right now. Um, I'll get that done, and I've got some things to wrap up. But um, I, I, when I'm here... I'm really in the moment. I'm really present in the moment, um, you know. And that's it's a cliche. Everybody wants, you know, but it's true. Yeah. And um, well, some not of, everybody can do that. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, I think. I, so I, I, I'm grateful for, for my time here. I'm grateful for, um, for the place being here. I'm grateful for you for introducing it to me. The, the connection years ago, which we talked about on, right. in the. Version one, Godfather one. Of the, uh, um, um, but yeah, you're the one that brought me down here. And oh, that's it, nice. So, yeah. yeah, well, you know, I, we f I found you on a, in a uh, magazine. I yeah. mean, you did, it was on Antarctica. Yeah. yeah and um, I could see your chops. I mean, it was just like, this guy has what it takes, you know? And sometimes that is all you need to do as an artist, quite frankly, is mm -hmm. put out the content, put out the material, and they will find you. I think if it's, you know, if it's quality enough, you know, people are going to find you. I mean, artists always ask me, well, how do I get in a gallery? How do I, you know, well, it's not that easy sometimes, you yeah. know, every gallerist has their own way. They see the world and their art and their gallery and how, what they're, uh, what they want in it. And, um, you know, I've only seen one Jim Woodside. So, <laughs> you know, well, that's, uh, thank you. That's really a, a quite a compliment but I, I i appreciate it and um and the relationship here all of it i i it's it's been great for me yeah yeah it's it's um and it, you know and, and it works both ways i mean we you have these relationships sometimes that 
maybe you don't sell a ton of paintings for a while and maybe it takes effort on both ends. But if you both commit to it and say, well, well I'm still, I'm still there if you are. Yeah. And, uh, and it takes a while sometimes to build uh, an audience. And I think we're really starting to, and we've been, you've been an artist for a while, but I think we've really started to build an audience for your work. And, uh, you know, especially the desert landscapes that you're doing now are just incredibly, uh, convincing to me as this is something that I uh, should have in my own home, which I do. Um, and <laughs> well, that, that, that means a lot uh, to me, especially from, um, when, um, especially from folks who, who have spent their whole life out here, you know, um, um, I, I think that, uh, that, you know, hearing that what I've done will resonate with someone like you or others who I, who I, Mm -hmm. I just intuitively know they know the desert. They know the landscape. Um, Heidi, uh, who I uh, who who I've uh, come to know um, down in Benson, you know, she's been here for practically her whole life as well. And she, you know, I, I, sometimes I'll ask her those kind of same kinds of things. Um, and I think that that is really really important, you know. Um, and yeah, in terms of the business of it, I. I yeah, I just keep doing them, you know, yeah. and um, and I think they're getting better, and uh, I I think that 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 will come, that um, but I don't. If an artist worries about that all the time, you drive yourself nuts, yeah. you know. Um, you know, I I I remember once when I was in my twenties in in New York, and I was really down about you know I just not selling stuff and this and and. And I have, was talking to my um, mentor, uh, teacher of mine at the time, who had stayed close to Salvatore Scarpitta, and he said, "You're just lucky they haven't found out what you're up to yet." You know, and I thought, you know, <laughs> only he he could turn that around uh -huh. into this. I think, well, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so anyway, um, um, well, and you've had to, uh, you know, pass that wisdom on to your kids that you're teaching too. Um, yeah, I, I, they are, uh, uh, since they're high school kids, but they're incredibly gifted from, you know, from around the world. This is an arts high school. And, um, um, I don't talk as much to them about the, that career sales aspect of it. They're a little bit young for that. You Some, think? Sometimes I do. I just wonder if they are, though. You know, I mean. Well, I, I, I guess it's it's a debate. I yeah, mean, it's not. They're, they're headed there, right? They're, I mean, they're they're headed there, and very and as, quickly, especially as time has you know they, they they have to grow up a lot quicker. Yeah. You know, um, so uh, it's not something I avoid, but maybe it's just that um, I don't want it to be a, a, a shadow over the production of art. You know, and the learning of art. So I don't try to dwell on it too much, but um, but I, I I don't have a great answer for you because you think it's more important to encourage than to say here's the realities. Um, e uh, yeah. I mean, I I first of all, I don't know exactly what the realities are. I mean, I think that that good artists artists will find a way to. Mm -hmm to contribute and, yeah, I agree. and, and, and they'll, they'll do things. Yeah. So, and it's not as clearly divided as it was when, when I was coming along where, you know, you went to commercial art or you went to fine art. Right. It's, it's this big, uh, mishmash now. And yeah. so that, that part is, is quite different. Um, um, I, I, I think if someone wants to make art, they're, they're going to do it, you know. I think I agree that with that 100. It's it, it, in a way they don't choose it; it chooses them. So, you know, and if they down the road do something else and they don't, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, being an artist, you know, a, a young person learning like that, uh, th those skills will help you in whatever you do. You know, learning to problem solve, learning to to adapt, learning to be innovative, learning to Look fail. Look at your environment. Yeah. All of it, yes. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, to me, that's the big one about art, is being in the moment of looking around at everything. To being, being present. Yeah, to being present. Yeah. I, I agree. I think that from art is what I've gotten the most of, is being present. Well, I think that, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that. And so the kids that you teach at mm -hmm. school, and you've been doing this for now, what, 30 years? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what percent would you think go on to actually have a career in the arts? 
And you're coming from a very, you know, high brow, yeah. you know, gifted students. Um, I would say most most of them. I mean, I I they all go to art school, and then you know, I keep track, uh, I keep in touch with a lot of them as you know as they gotten older and had families, and mm -hmm. some have become teachers, um, some have become uh, designers, and uh, uh, and working in digital fields and things like that, and some painters and sculptors. So I I think most of them still do it, but n not all of them. And again, I don't. You, you know, some of them who want to get back in touch with me, uh, they'll, they'll say, well, I feel bad because I'm not doing it. I'm, I, I don't care. You're doing whatever you're doing. You know, right. you're, you're uh, you know, whatever. Right. And, uh, and you, 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 it, it's, you hope that you send a kid out into the world with some humility, some understanding about their environment, about being present. Um, and in a way, they're, they're just one little antidote to all the other garbage that's around. And so though well, that's that's good enough. You know? Yeah. It's interesting that they have a it's hard for them to come back to you if they haven't stayed in art. Uh yeah, sometimes it is because they feel a little failure. They don't feel, or they feel guilty. Yeah. I said, No, don't don't. It's yeah. not it's not like that. Yeah. No. I mean Life is a river, no, <laughs> and it is, takes lots of branches, yeah, this and is, you can't predict where it is. And you know, they may still get back to art or something like it. That that's right. And I I I do believe that 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 art time is different than regular time. You know, like I was saying before, um, uh, you know, that we can work on a drawing or a painting for an hour, but it took you forty years to leave it alone. I do think that's true with an artist too. Mm. I mean, somebody can, can come back to it later in life or at a, different, at a point when they need to. And, and it was like they never stopped, you know? So I don't, I don't presume to know that, you know, I think that, you know, the, the, like I said before, I think in our previous podcast, the older I get at this teaching and making art, the less I feel I know. And the last recording was a couple of years ago, so I know even less than I did then. <laughs> well, it is. It's, it's always changing. Yeah. And it will continue to change. I think the one thing that won't change is that there's creative human beings out there that have to express themselves. And, yeah, um, we need them, too. Oh, yeah. we do need them. Yeah. Are they in, back east, are they supporting, they being government and states, supporting uh, primary art schools and things like that for kindergarten through fifth, sixth grade? Uh, you know, I can't, I, I'm not, I can't speak officially about the, about that, but, but I think the general trend uh, has been no. I mean, those, those things get cut out of, of schools and those things get uh, uh, put on the back burner. You know, I, 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 I think that, 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 that we really lose something there. You know, I think. Oh, I agree. Um, I mean, when I was coming up long time ago, you know, I, I think w where there was more funding in schools or things like that, you know, we had all these big music programs and art mm -hmm. programs. We weren't even aware of it. It was just kind of like, yeah, that's how it is. Right. And it's, 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 I don't think it's like that anymore. Yeah, I don't think so. Is there anything we can do, you think, about that? Well, we're going to get into a political discussion, but uh, yeah, there's things uh, I, 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 I think so. Um, I, I think the trends of what we value and and what we emphasize in terms of, of bringing a young person along ha have to be reordered. Mm. You know, I, um, you know, I, I think that. Um, I, I have a friend in um, uh, in Korea. is a parent of a former student of mine, and um, he's uh, about my age, maybe a little a year or two older, or uh, maybe younger. I don't know. But anyway, he's a really, really big deal in uh, in cancer research and uh, and and science in um, in Korea and Asia and in the United States as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you know with massive grants, government grants to hire young people and build um, research centers and that kind of thing. And he's a real innovative thinker. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm still friends with him. And uh, he, um, he says that, that 
the problem that he has in, in getting young people, young doctors and researchers to work with him is that you know they all want to, and he'll get the top, top people, top scorers and things mm -hmm. like that. But they, they don't think creatively. They don't think like artists. And uh, he always um, promoted that for, in his own children. And uh, I, you know, and this is at a really high level, and he's telling me that. So I, I, I remember that. Well, you can get so focused. Yeah. I mean, I can say that from self-experience. You get so focused in science and, you know, medicine, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you can't see anything else. Yeah. You're blinded. You literally have blinders on. Yeah. And uh, unless somebody says, hey, here's some other things. You should do this while you're, you know, studying your periodic table. And yeah. uh, it might open your your mind up. It definitely opens your, the sides of your brain up. And uh, <clears throat> it's really important. We as, and part of that, I think, unfortunately lies to the parents that uh, they also focus sometimes their children too much on just saying, well, you know, you need to be this, 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 focus on this. Don't focus on anything. Quit drawing. Yeah. Put those crayons down. You're not going to make a living with well, crayons. Well, the, the pressure on them is, is so intense uh, now. And the, um, the presentation of choices, though I don't really think they're, you know, because w whether it's with the internet or whatever, but I mean, they're so many choices are presented to young people all the time, to all of us, that in some way it's it's like, uh, you know, the 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 myth that they're told over and over again is you have you can do anything you want, the whole world's there. But but actually, I think that it just cre increases anxiety, mm. you know, and because they can't figure out what their road is. Yeah, and and it it it. If, if if the whole world is this meteor shower of opportunities coming at you, you know, you're, what are you going to do? So I think that I, that 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 kind of simplicity, the clarity of making art, um, helps you kind of navigate that stuff. Mm. I, I do believe that, you know, and that's where I get back to the idea of, you know, I, I'm not trying to make the next painter or the next this. But I'm trying to make a person that will see the world clearly, mm. and and you know they'll probably do it in art. But that's that's what this is about, you know. Yeah, it builds on something. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And you clearly have uh, have been successful in that. Well, I hope so. Yeah, they but, kept you as a, as a but, teacher. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, that so I that that's very 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 satisfying and um. You know, and I try to, I try to live what I talk about and as I paint. You know, the, those same kinds of things, the same kinds of uh, of distilling things down to some kind of essence and some sort of clarity. I think you should give your your kids the opportunity for extra points if they listen to this podcast. Oh, I will, especially now because we have to do teaching online That's for a right. while, and I really have no idea how to do that, so we're going to come up with some stuff, but yeah, you just gave me a great idea. First assignment, listen to me talk, and then tell me if you learned anything. Yeah, <laughs> and write a par two paragraphs of what art is important <laughs> and yeah. why it's important to, my, to Jim Woodside and his kids. That's, that's good. Well, I will. So I've yeah. got lesson plan number one for you. Oh, no, we can stretch this out for a couple of weeks. Can I think. You, well, you got two podcasts, too, <laughs> yeah. so you can have them go back to the other one. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah and get the, If you want them to. Now, you may not want them to know the, the backstory. Oh, no, no. There's nothing I, I'm not... We, we didn't cover anything bad? I can't no, remember. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I, 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 I'm a pretty honest, straightforward person about those things. I don't, you know... That's one of the notes you should write down, children. Yeah. He's, he's going to be looking for that quote. Yeah. <laughs> I think that... Um, yeah, I think if you're a good artist, a good teacher, that kind of humility, you know, that you don't know all the answers and that this is a circuitous route, this whole process, I think that that's important. It's also kind of um, comforting for a young person, I think, you know, because, um, yeah, you know, that, like I said, about the expectations and the intensity of... Yeah, it's an intense world. There's got yeah. so much information coming at them. Yeah, and uh, um, I think this is one of the problems with the current pandemic. That's such for fear is there is so much of social media, media, and um, I mean it's a double-edged sword. It's good for getting information out and for people hopefully following 
uh, guidelines, but at the yeah. same time, I think there's an, an immense amount of fear that develops um, no matter where you are, you know. And sometimes I think it's good to turn off that for a little bit, walk in the desert or in the woods and take a deep breath and relax. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I, I agree with that. And um, and I think everyone says that, that they would, that they, but actually doing it is something else, you know, because it, it, it really is true. You know, it, it, it really is true, this kind of bombard, this cascade of information all the time. And I would have said that prior to any of this pandemic, and hopefully this thing will level out soon. But, but um, I, 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 all of that, all of that information, that, that it, 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 there's so much anxiety to it. You yeah, know? we do the count. Yeah. You know, how, many, it, how many worldwide cases? How many deaths? How many in our state? And we're, and we're all guilty of it, including myself. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, but but part of that that you know that isolation of going into the desert and or whatever environment you're mm -hmm. in can help you put that in perspective. And I actually think artists are good at helping put that in perspective. I agree a hundred percent. I've talked I, to three artists since this kind of exploded. Yeah. Um, including yourself. And they're all like, you know, this is kind of what I do anyway. Yeah. You know, I self-isolate, I paint, I focus on what I do, I create, um, and that's what I do. And I can't worry about the rest of it. I can't worry about the sales. I can't worry about anything else. Yeah. I have to worry about just doing what I can do. Um, and so if more people could be like artists... I think it would be a, a better uh, I, time. I, I, I think that that's true. I, I do. I do. And, um, you know, I, I even I even think about myself coming out into the desert this time of year and all like, all right, there uh, all this crazy stuff going on. There must be some reason I'm out here doing this right mm -hmm. now. So, you know, I'm not uh, I'm not saying I'm on some grand mission. I, don't, I never think that way. But but I try to keep what I'm doing in perspective relative to the greater world and so forth. Yeah, and, yeah. and the moment in time, being yeah. present. Yeah. Being present yeah. in the moment of time. Yeah. yeah. Everyone that listens to the podcast, you should go be present in the moment of time. Go look at a sunrise or sunset today. Take up some deep breaths mm -hmm. if you can. If you can go outside, do go outside. And uh, you know, I think you'll feel a little better. Absolutely. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a good place to end. All right. Can't well, shake your hand anymore. It's not. It's not oh, no. We'll do an air five or yeah. something. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> well, we'll go look at some more art. All right. And, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. Go, go create. Go create, people. All right. Thanks, Mark. Uh, Jim Woodside, Art Dealer Diaries. And remember, this is for extra credit for all those kids out there that are in class. <laughs> that's right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you should. That'll be a good one. We need your support for the Medicine Man Gallery channel, so make sure to click the subscribe button and tap the little bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video, which we do every morning on Wednesday and Friday. See you soon.